he keeps stepping up the rhetoric. And the Chinese are concerned about it. The Russians are concerned about it. Some of the South Koreans are getting concerned about it. Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. We have a full news day. We've got Alex coming up in the next segment. He's going to talk about what's going on with North Korea. Of course, North Korea is now warning of, quote, a super mighty preemptive strike. Boy, that sounds scary. <laughs> I mean, when you look at his missiles with the bent noses, uh, whether or not those things are real or not, uh, the missiles that repeatedly blow up on the launch pad, as I've said many times, uh, we need to have a new uh, new name for missiles that self-destruct on the launch pad. We can start calling them an unlaunch in honor of Kim Jong-un. But he keeps stepping up the rhetoric, and the Chinese are concerned about it. The Russians are concerned about it. Some of the South Koreans are getting concerned about it. The Russians have now moved troops and helicopters to their borders, just as the Chinese did earlier. What are they afraid of? Well, actually, they're afraid of refugees streaming across the border into their country. They have used, North Korea has used, a weaponized uh, immigration program, if you will, to release criminals into China in the past. They did it in 1998, just as we had the Mariel boat lift where Castro released a lot of thousands of prisoners into South Florida. And, of course, the movie Scarface was a tribute to the aftermath of what that creates. China doesn't want to see what may be three million refugees flood across their borders in the aftermath of either a war or an economic meltdown due to sanctions. Plus, they need the minerals that North Korea has. This is something that has actually a problem, a bigger problem, for China, Russia, and South Korea than it is for the U.S. if we didn't continue to beard the bear, in my opinion. But we're going to have Alex breaking that down for us. We'll be talking about that, as well as Roger Stone will be joining us in the second hour. He's now on the headlines of the Washington Post today. Roger Stone helped Donald Trump get elected. Now he's helping himself. They criticize him for writing a book. Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't the Washington Post sell information? <laughs> Why is that a crime? They're criticizing him for doing what they're doing. And at the same time, they criticize him. We now see uh, revelations coming out after the uh, on the Hill, people looking at the Hillary Clinton campaign doing a post-mortem. And this article from The Hill says, Obama thought that Clinton's handling of the email server was political malpractice. Yes, that's why you hire people like Roger Stone, so you don't commit political malpractice out of your overarching ego and your habit ingrained with decades of lying to the American public and getting away with it. That was really the downfall of Hillary Clinton. But, of course, they wanted to move it off to the Russians. Quite frankly, I think as we look at this uh, moving forward and these revelations we get from the Obama administration— a lot of what was uh, going on with this false narrative about the Russians hacking our election, I think, was trying to protect themselves from what they were actually doing by spying on the Trump people, the Trump campaign, illegally themselves. They were committing uh, crimes that were far greater than anything that Richard Nixon did during Watergate. They knew that eventually that might come out, so they had to prepare this narrative to try to inoculate themselves against criminal prosecution. In ancient times, man roamed the earth in a constant state of hunting or being hunted. Introducing Caveman, where cutting edge science meets ancient super nutrients. Secure your bottle right now at InfoWarsStore.com.